Yeah, thanks, Dr. Zakir Naik. You're a big help. Um, I have one more question. I'm a bit confused between the two verses in Quran. Um, the first one is in Surah Baqarah 62, yeah, which says that if you believe in one God and believe in the last day and do good deeds, yeah, you shall have nothing to fear on the day of judgment, yeah, and you will get your reward with your Lord, yeah. Mind it, in this surah, it doesn't say it, uh, that you have to believe in the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the last messenger. And there is also another surah which supports this, which is the 22, in chapter number 22 and verse number 17, I think, in which it says a similar thing, that those who, do, who believe in one God, who believe in the last day and who do good deeds will be fine on the day of judgment. But then there is also one more verse in the Quran which says that whosoever amongst you comes to me without the religion of Islam, it shall not be accepted of him and he shall be among the losers. So in that last verse, does Islam mean believing in one God and believing in Prophet Muhammad and believing in all the other rituals? Or because Islam means submission, so whoever has submitted, yeah, is submitted. So, you know, what's the meaning of Islam in the last verse? The brother asked a very good question. He's quoted a verse of the Quran of Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 62, that all those who believe in Allah and believe in the last day, irrespective of whether they are Jews or Christians or Sabians, they shall have no fear and inshallah they will have the reward. Similar thing is repeated in Surah Maida, chapter number 5. So, brother is asking that here the world doesn't mention believing in Prophet. If you read the context of this revelation, brother, what happened? People came to the Prophet and said that we have been Jews, we have been Christians, we have been Sabians. Can God forgive us? In that context, the reply was given, as long as you believe in Allah and the last day, irrespectively previously, whether you are a Christian or a Jew or a Sabian, you will get the reward. It does not mean today a person who says he's a Christian and who believes Jesus is God, he will go to Jannah. No, it does not mean that. Not Jesus is God, believes in one God. Ah, believes in one God. But if they believe Jesus is God, then they won't go then to Jannah. That's fine. But my, fine. Concept, my point is, yes. believes in one true God. Correct. So he has to believe in one true God. And if he believes in true God, he also follows the commandment of God. Simple. Yeah, but maybe he's confused with that. Yeah. So that means he's believed in a confused God. No, he, believe, he, he believes in his creator, yeah, but he, he's not yet reached that level. So then if you ask me the question, a person who truly believes in God and a little bit confused from his heart and yet doesn't believe in Prophet Muhammad, will he go to heaven or hell? That's your question. My question is, he's clear that there is one God. Clear there's one God. He's confused in the Prophet. He does not do idol worship. He does, does not do that. He believes in one God and does good deeds and believes in the last day. Can he go to Jannah is your question? Yes. Fine. This answer, and I'll come to your last question also about that Islam is the only way of life. Other verses talk about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yeah. So if you truly believe, you have to believe in Prophet Muhammad. Yes. But if you ask me, no. Suppose I believe in God and if I die today. Yes. If you did good deeds, you believed in God. But I, ha no, I have two verses of the Quran supporting yeah. me. That you believe in one God, you do good deeds, and you believe in the last day, you shall have nothing to fear on that day. That's what I, I tell two, you. Yeah. Two verses, but the context of the verse is what? Yeah, that the I context know. of the verse is when people came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they wanted to accept Islam that previously we were Jews, we were Christians, then the verse is said. The yeah. context is important. And coming back to your first question, mm -hmm. that Quran says in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse number 19, in Nadina in the La al Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Allah is submitting our will to God. Submitting, yeah. Submitting our will to God. So, and Quran also says in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 85, if anyone desires any other religion besides Islam, it will never be accepted of him, and he shall be amongst the losers. Yes. So now submitting our will to God means first you have to find out which is the true God. Yes. And when you find out, you have to come to Allah. Yes. You can't say, I believe in true God, but it's Jesus. I believe in no, true God. No, I believe, I believe in Allah. Huh. That's, so if you believe, believe in Allah, in God, yes. you have to follow what is the commandment of Allah. Now, when, when I, you believe in Allah, and if you don't come to commandment of Allah, that means it's not a true Allah. I believe Allah is not created by anyone. He is not born of anyone. He doesn't have kids. Uh, he, you know. Correct. Kulhu Allahu ahad Allahu samallam yalud balam yulad balam. Mashallah. I believe in that, Master. yeah, but that's, okay. that's where my state is. That's right. Yeah, but now, now, that's not complete Islam, that's part of Islam. Yeah. Part of Islam. Yeah, right. Even yeah. believing in Prophet alone will not take you to Jannah. You may believe in one God, believe in Prophet, but do bad deeds, you will not go to heaven. Fine? Yeah. So what you have to realize, if you believe that true God, when you know where you got the school of Allah was, from where? From mm -hmm. where you got this from school of Allah was? I got it from the Quran. From the Quran. Yes. So from the Quran, you also get 
yeah, Surya Muhammad. That, that part Jabhaan. agrees with my brain. That part agrees with my brain. Yeah, the rest, I have questions. So, uh, what question you have asked me, I will try and... Right. <laughs> so on the day of judgment, I can tell you, I gave this brother, I tried to remove the misconception. Right, okay, I'll take... Uh, well, that's a little bit of a private question. I'll ask you through email. Okay, fine. One no problem. Question, the last question. So when you ask from email, yeah. when you get convinced, that time I'll ask you to believe in Prophet Muhammad also. Sure, sure. Okay. Fine? Yeah, my last question is, uh, we see uh, this uh, the, the style of uh, the kalima, yeah, that la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah means there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is a messenger of God, yeah? Now, Islam uh, has this distinct style. I have not seen this style in Christianity or Judaism, that kind of kalima. Do I don't know? I mean, is, was there the same no. kind of kalima in no. those two religions as well? No. You know why? Yeah. Because it says there is no God but Allah. Yeah, and similar, similar, similar in those lines. I'll tell you. And Prophet Muhammad is a messenger and servant. So no one should worship Prophet Muhammad. Therefore, it's mentioned there. Fine? Yeah, Tomorrow so people should not start worshipping Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yes, yes. We love him, we respect him, we revere him, we are ready to die for him, but we don't worship him. I understand. So maybe in Christianity they could have something like, there is only one God and, Jesus, and Father, Jesus, peace be upon Father, him. Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Well, no, but I'm talking about what Jesus told, not what Christians are telling today. At every time of the Prophet, it was La ilaha illallah, that time Isa or Rasulullah, no problem. It was, it was that time? No, that is what people had to believe in. Not yeah. in Arabic, in the language they spoke. No, what I'm saying is from your yes. study, from your yes. study, have you yes. found a kalima like that in, in what mm. Jesus would have not, said? Not in Arabic. Okay. At every time, that you had to believe in the Prophet to be a Muslim. Yeah. So at that time, you have to believe in one God and you had to believe Jesus was the Prophet of God. At the time of Moses, you had to believe that there is no God but Allah and Moses was the messenger of Allah. You had to believe in that. I understand, but did you see that reference? It in, is understood. In... There is no reference in the Quran. The because... Quran says they were messengers. It is understood. And if I don't believe in Jesus, now also I'm not a Muslim. Quran right. says you have to believe in each and every messenger today. Yeah. So believing that time was a must. Yeah. And today you have to believe in Musa salam, and Isa salam. You're asking the question, did you have to believe that time? Simple no, logic, I, yes. I know you have to believe at that time as well. Yes. What I'm saying is, why don't I see any, any, any kalima like that in today's Christianity or Judaism? Oh, today's Christianity has changed Christianity. How about Judaism? It I don't is see... changed. It is changed, brother. The so, so, they removed, so they removed the basic of, of the kalima? Of course, of course. They have changed the messenger to God. Yeah. It is mentioned in the Bible today also that Jesus is not God. He never claimed divinity. He is yeah. a messenger of God. Yeah. That's what the teaching of the church is. Yes. Today's form is the changed form. How, how about Judaism? They still believe there is only one God. They don't regard Moses as God. So, did you see a kalima like uh, there is only one God and Mo Musa al Rasulullah or something? No, like but that? they believe that Musa al Salam was the messenger of God. They yeah. believed in that. Yeah, but At the same time, they even believe that you are the imposter. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. So that's wrong. Yeah, yeah. If you believe Jesus the imposter, now Billah, that is wrong. So, so you find some of the other mistakes here or there. Right. Therefore, Quran is the Furqan. Quran, Furqan yeah. means the criteria to judge right from wrong. So yeah. whatever matches with the Quran, we agree is the word of God. What is against the Quran contradicts, we say not the word of God. What doesn't contradict, and doesn't match, ambiguous, may be right, may be wrong. I understand your point, sir. What I'm saying is, did you see any reference in probably in your study of Judaism, probably no. that the Kalima of... The, so no. even the Kalima is gone. I mean, they no. don't even have that. Maybe I, in Aramaic, maybe it will be in Aramaic. Or I don't know. Oh. I don't know of any such. Right, right, was. right. So, I mean, so, so, so they were still believing in this thing that you have to believe in Moses as messenger. Yes. But, but there is nothing concrete like La ilaha illallah or, you know, like... I don't know of any in the scripture. Right, right, okay. Right, okay. One well, my last question is... Um, uh, Third, last, fourth, last. This last. Yeah. Last of the last. Just last. Recent, last of the last. Last of the last, yes. Recently in India, it was in the news that uh, same-sex marriages got allowed, yeah? And, and uh, on reading upon it, yeah, I found out that they said that it is at the genetic level of people. Genetic, it's in the hormones, yeah? What they desire, what they don't desire. Now, I understand that Islam is completely against this. It doesn't allow this. But what I'm saying is, if someone's got that it, at a genetic level, yeah, and it's his choice, Very good and, and he, was, he, was, he was born with that, uh, with that kind of tendency, and yet Islam chooses to, uh, to punish him on something, on something that he was born with. I agree with you. So God it should... It sounds illogical. Yeah, so God, yeah. God made him like that, and uh, God is punishing him for that as well. Brother asked a question that recently in India, homosexuality has been permitted, not permitted, but the law says it's not a big crime that was there in the Indian constitution. Yeah. They have softened it, not permitted yet. Yes, yes. It is a court case that took place in Delhi, it's not a law yet. Yes. There's a who and cry yet, there are many organizations fighting against it. 
So it's not law. It's a law in Canada, in yeah. USA, in UK, not in India yet. Right. Okay. Yeah. And today there are some scientific research that say that homosexuality is genetic. Yes. yes. So the brother asked the question: If homosexuality is genetic, then who's to blame? How can you consider it to be a sin? Very good question. Yes. This research was done earlier, a few years back, and later on, what was found out that this is totally false. Right. And the person who propounded this himself was homosexual. Right. Okay. So there's no scientific proof yet. It's an assumption. Right. Science doesn't testify yet that homosexuality is genetic. Right. In fact, Quran says in Surah Araf, chapter number seven, verse number eighty-one, which says that, "Do you have lust for men more in preference to women, to homosexuality?" Yes. Talking about Qaumul Lut. Yes. It is prohibited in the Bible. Also talking about Lut al Salam. Yes. Also in the Quran is prohibited. Yes. Homosexuality is prohibited completely. Right. It is an assumption that it's genetic. It's not genetic at all. How does it happen? I'll tell you. Yeah. The psychology they tell us that once you overdo a thing, you start losing the pleasure. Right. So what God has permitted the normal sexual way of life, you start overdoing it. You start doing unnatural things. Right. What God has permitted natural things, you do unnatural. You start doing from the reverse side. So once you get fed up of doing it so often, that's the reason scientific research says a person who has no extra 